Okay, so today we're going to talk about conjugated systems. First thing we're going to do is really define what a conjugated system is and then go through a couple of examples. A conjugated system is a system of connected p orbitals. Okay, so we're looking for p orbitals. These p orbitals can come from alternating single and multiple bonds, so double bonds or triple bonds, or lone pairs that happen to be in p orbitals. Okay, so we're looking for double or triple bonds and lone pairs. That's what is part of a conjugated system. In conjugated systems, electrons are delocalized. That means they're spread throughout the conjugated system. And the effect of this is it lowers the overall energy of the molecule and basically stabilizes the molecule. So if a system has a choice, um, if a system can rehybridize in some way to make it more conjugated, it will. Okay, so systems, because conjugation makes a molecule more stable, the more conjugated, the better, because the molecule is more stable. So let's look at a couple of um, simple examples here and, and talk a little bit about hybridization. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is kind of look at this example here on the left. This is an alkene. It's got four double bonds, so it's a tetraene. And what I'm going to do is we see here we have alternating double bonds. So we have double, single, double, single, double, single, and then a double bond. The key thing to remember here is when you have a double bond that consists of a pi bond, and a pi bond is a bond between two p orbitals. So this double bond has two p orbitals. That double bond has two p orbitals. The next double bond has two p orbitals. And the last double bond has two p orbitals. So what we've done is just draw in, drawn in all of our p orbitals. And what you can see is we have a continuous set of p orbitals. And that is a conjugated system. A conjugated system is connected, continuous p orbitals. So one thing we want to do is just be able to count the number of electrons and count the number of atoms we have. So to count the atoms we have, we just simply look at the number of p orbitals we have. Okay, so there's our first p orbital, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 conjugated p orbitals in this system. And how many electrons? Well, each double bond has two electrons. Two, two, four, six, eight. So we also have eight um, electrons in this system. So in our first example here, we have a conjugated system of eight atoms and eight electrons. And that's a very simple case. What I want to do now is just talk a little bit about hybridization, remind you about hybridization. So, looking at the first nitrogen here on the left, uh, here we have a nitrogen that's connected to three different carbon atoms, three ethyl groups and a lone pair. Okay, so obviously this nitrogen is sp3 hybridized. And that's something that should be very familiar to us. What I want to do is show you what happens when we introduce an alkene adjacent to the nitrogen. So once we introduce any kind of pi system, so we'll now draw in our pi bonds, or draw in our p orbitals for our pi bond, we get a change of hybridization of that nitrogen. Okay. What happens is this nitrogen is no longer sp3 hybridized. It's actually sp2 hybridized. And why that is, is this lone pair 
now goes into a p orbital. Okay, so the nitrogen becomes sp2 hybridized. It puts this lone pair into a p orbital, and what we've now done is created a conjugated system. So we have one p orbital, two p orbitals, and now three p orbitals. And that is a conjugated system. So one thing we should kind of do to change our definition of a little bit, um, a conjugated system is a system of connected p orbitals. And we'll just put in a little footnote here. You need to have at least... need to have at least three. So to really have a truly conjugated system, we need three continuous p orbitals, and that will be a conjugated system. Okay, so going back to this hybridization, normally the nitrogen, right, not conjugated is sp3 hybridized, so this lone pair is in an sp3 hybridized orbital. But any time you have a lone pair adjacent to another p orbital, that lone pair will automatically go into a p orbital as well. The nitrogen is rehybridized as sp2 because it creates a conjugated system. And what happens with the conjugated system? A conjugated system lowers the energy. So this molecule is actually lower in energy, more stable when the nitrogen rehybridizes and puts that lone pair into a p orbital and now a conjugated system. And that's going to be very important when we talk about um, when we really talk about our, um, the, the next examples here. Okay, so let's do a couple more examples here. Um, let's just scroll down. Okay, and we'll work on a couple more examples. So what I really want to do is uh, look at this example here. And what we're going to do is simply count the number of conjugated atoms we have and the number of conjugated electrons we have in this example right here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is simply count and draw in my p orbitals. So starting on the right side, I have an alkene, okay? That's a pi bond, a pi bond between two p orbitals. We have a C double bond O, again two p orbitals. And now I notice I have a lone pair on this nitrogen, okay? And remember, we now have a lone pair on the nitrogen next to a p orbital. So this lone pair is also, in fact, in a p orbital, so we'll draw in our p orbital. And we have another alkene with two p orbitals. And now we have an alkyne. So what we have to remember about an alkyne is there are two p, two pi bonds or two p orbitals, but only one of these p orbitals is actually parallel to the conjugated system. So our conjugated system has to have parallel and overlapping p orbitals. So I'm going to draw in the other p orbitals here, but notice they're kind of drawn to the side. So those two electrons that the two electrons shared between the blue p orbitals is not going to count because I have to have overlapping and parallel p orbitals. So let's count the number of conjugated atoms we have, okay? Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? So in this example, we have nine conjugated atoms, 
and how many electrons do we have. All right, so looking here, I'm going to kind of count and mark what we have. Again, there are a total of four electrons in this alkyne, four electrons in pi bonds, four electrons in p orbitals, but only two that are in red that are overlapping with the other ones count. So two here, another two here, so we're up to four. So two, four, five, six, the lone pair, two, four, six, another two here for the double bond, eight, another two here, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten electrons in the conjugated system. And that's our answer. Right? And just by counting the number of atoms and electrons and writing that down, we can kind of clearly show whether we have an understanding of the concepts of conjugation. All right, so let's do one more example here. And go through this process one more time. Again, what we're going to do is count the number of conjugated atoms and conjugated electrons. And I'm just going to go through and draw in the number of p orbitals that I see. So first we have an alkene, that is a pi bond and two p orbitals. Next we have an oxygen, and what we have to remember is this oxygen has two lone pairs, okay? And because I have a lone pair next to a p orbital, one of these sets of electrons will go into a p orbital. So this oxygen rehybridizes to become sp2, and only one lone pair will go into a p orbital. Remember, only one of these lone pairs can overlap with the p orbitals at a time. So only one will go in. So we'll draw that here. And that's my two electrons are in here. Okay, again we have a C double bond O, two electrons there, another alkene, two electrons and two p orbitals, two here, two here, two here, and again we don't want to forget a lone pair, so one of these lone pairs will go into a p orbital. Now we notice there is another alkene here, but what I see is that there are sp3 carbons in between. Okay, so I am going to mark these. I am going to mark these um, down. So there are two p orbitals here, but they're not part of the conjugated system. Okay. So to have a conjugated system, you need to have three or more. Here there's only two, and they're di not directly connected here. Okay, so our conjugated system, all right, our conjugated system is what we see in red, and I'm just going to kind of circle our conjugated system here. Everything in red counts. This blue part does not count as the largest conjugated system. We need to have three or more continuous p orbitals. Okay, so let's just go through and count how many atoms we have. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we have twelve atoms. Again, let's count that again just to be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so we have twelve conjugated atoms. And now let's count how many electrons we have. Two from this lone pair, 
4, 6, 8, 10, another 2 from the lone pair, 12, 14. Okay, so 2 from each of the alkenes, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2 from this lone pair, 2 from this lone pair, and that gets us 14 conjugated electrons. All right, so that is a good way, counting conjugated atoms and con counting conjugated electrons, for us to be aware and understand conjugated systems. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I just want you to work on one problem on your own. Okay, so please turn this into class on Wednesday. Simply count the number of conjugated atoms and conjugated electrons you have for this molecule here. Alright, so all you have to do for Wednesday is draw the molecule. I want you to circle the p orbitals and any electrons that are in p orbitals and then just put down the number of conjugated atoms and conjugated electrons and turn that into class on Wednesday.